How time flies! It is almost 100 years from the Great Depression 1929. Till today, although there were more economic regressions during the past years, no one can compare with it by the influence and the severity. Whenever there is an economic downturn, unemployment increase, bank failures, and a stock market crash, people always recall 1929, that lingering nightmare behind prosperity. Today, let's first start with the nice part of this dream, prosperity, the roaring twenties. The US in the 1920s had already experienced rapid economic growth for about half a century. In 1894, it surpassed Britain to become the world's largest industrial country. At the beginning of World War I, the US as a neutral state served as an arsenal for both sides. The American factories were the places where both sides of the world turned to for the supply of military materials. With the war began, the United States was a net debtor in international capital markets. By the end of the war, the United States changed to be a capital exporting country, taking on the role traditionally played by Britain and other European capital exporters. With Britain weakened after the war, New York emerged as London's equal, if not her superior, in the contest to be the world's leading financial center. The 1920s was a post-war revival and a prosperous decade for the entire Western society. New technologies gained a numerous boost. Mass production made it affordable to the middle class. With the large-scale industrial production, automobile, telephone, radio, and television, these once luxury goods have entered the thousands of the households. During World War I, large numbers of women were recruited into jobs vacated by men who had gone to fight in the war. It was the beginning of working women. It also increased the family income. As women's social position continues to improve, they also began to pursue a new free lifestyle. The flapper redefined the modern look for British and American women. Jazz became the most popular form of music of youth. Dancing clubs became enormously popular. During the Roaring Twenties, the most notable performance in the U.S. financial market is the always-growing bull market. U.S. stocks rose continually from 1921. And by October 1929, the Dow Jones Index rose from 67 points to 365 points, an increase of more than four times. Everything seems perfect until the stock market crisis. For the previous decade, wealth rose rapidly in the American colony, and the society became quite consumerism. As the stock prices rose, investing in the stock market came to be seen as an easy way to make money. And even people of ordinary means used much of their income or even mortgage their homes to buy stock. By the end of the decade, hundreds of millions of shares were carried on margin with borrowed money. On October 24, 1929, as nervous investors began selling overpriced shares, the stock market finally crashed. A record of 12.9 million shares were traded that day, known as the Black Tuesday. Five days later, on October 29th of Black Tuesday, some 16 million shares were traded after another wave of panic swept Wall Street. Millions of shares ended up worthless and those investors who had bought stocks on margin were wiped out completely. From October 29th to November 13th, a total of 30 billion US dollars of wealth disappeared in these two weeks, equivalent to the total expenditure of the United States in the First World War. Between September and November, stock prices fell 33%. Between 1929 and 1933, the stock market lost almost 90% of its value. Those companies and individuals who borrowed money and mortgaged real estate to speculate in the stock market went bankrupt, 
and the banks also got a lot of bad debts. The stock market crash brought a widespread loss of confidence that led to drastically lower investment and persistent underconsumption, which made another two waves of crisis cannot be avoided: the economic crisis and the bank crisis. Because of the sharp decline in consumption and the loss of confidence, industries already in overproduction began to reduce capacity. The amount of investment dropped from 40.4 billion U.S. dollars in 1929 to 27.4 billion in 1930, and then to 4.7 billion in 1932. Between 1929 and 1933, industrial production fell nearly 47 percent. GDP declined by 30 percent. In 1929, unemployment was around 3 percent in the U.S. In 1933, at the peak of the depression, nearly 25 percent of the nation's total workforce was unemployed. Wage income for workers who were lucky enough to have kept their jobs. They are almost 43 percent between 1929 and 1933. Many Americans forced to buy on credit fell into debt, and the number of forced closures and repossessions climbed steadily. Many people cannot afford to pay their loans, resulting in having to give up the house and other assets. Hundreds of thousands of families could not pay their mortgages, were evicted from their homes. As the economic depression deepened in the early 30s, banks began to fail because of the bank run, and finally caused the bank crisis. More than 9,000 banks failed in the United States between 1930 and 1933, equal to some 30 percent of the total number of banks. Around 11,000 banks failed during the Great Depression, leaving many with no savings. More than one billion U.S. dollars in bank deposits were lost due to bank closings. In addition to a large number of unemployed, bankrupt workers in cities, rural life is not easy either. It was the worst economy disaster in American history. Farm prices fell so drastically that many farmers lost their homes and land. Many went hungry, and the Dust Bowl worsened the effects of the Great Depression. The Dust Bowl was a natural disaster that devastated the Midwest in the 1930s. It was the worst drought in North America in 1,000 years. Victims of the drought and dust in the Midwest left their farms and headed for California. Families migrated to California to find work that had disappeared by the time they got there. Many lived in shanty towns called Hoovervilles, named after the president. Herbert Hoover. If we take a look at the normal people's daily life in the Great Depression, there are a few typical changes. During that tough time, people chose to spend time at home. Neighbors got together to play cards and board games such as Scrabble and Monopoly, both introduced during the 1930s, became popular. More than one third of the cinemas in America closed between 1929 and 1934. Economy hardship caused family breakdowns. The stress of financial strain took a psychological toll, especially on men who were suddenly unable to provide for their families. Marriage became strained, although many couples could not afford to separate. Divorce rates dropped during the 1930s. But abandonments increased. The U.S. birth rate reached an all-time low in 1936, when the total fertility rate fell to 2.1 children per woman. But contrary to the popular law, there was no epidemic of suicides in the wake of the stock market crash of 1929. In the United States, the suicide wave. That followed the stock market crash is also part of the legend of 1929, but in fact there was none. The number of the suicides in the United States in October and November 1929 were among the lowest of any month of that year. 
the suicide rate, in fact, had been higher during the summer months before the crash. By mid November 1929, while 44 suicides had occurred during the previous four weeks in Manhattan, that number was lower than the 53 recorded over the same period in 1928. The myth of stockbrokers leaping from buildings probably originated by a British reporter who had been very badly burned in the market himself. He had watched the crash from the visitor gallery and reported that a body fell not far from him. The reporter's name was Winston Churchill. The suicide he documented was in fact a German tourist. The death came on the morning of October 24, hours before the market's plunge, so it couldn't have been connected to the crash. People may not have been leaping off buildings by the dozens. But during the final months of 1929, American newspapers reported many terrible incidents involving those who lost nearly everything in the crash. 1932, Roosevelt won the election by 472 to 59, with his promise of the New Deal programs. The programs focused on what historians refer to as the three R's: relief, recovery, and reform. Relief for the unemployed and the poor, recovery of the economic back to be normal levels, and the reform of the financial system to prevent a repeat depression. During the New Deal, the banking and the monetary system has been reformed. Banks were put on holidays, and only the sound ones reopened. 4,004 small local banks were permanently closed and merged into large banks. Depositors eventually received, on average, 85% of their deposits. The banking crisis finally stopped. The gold standard has been suspended. The outflow of gold has been stopped by forbidding the export of gold except under license from the Treasury. Many unemployed young people were put to work on a wide range of government-financed public projects. Building bridges, airports, dams, post offices, hospitals, and hundreds of thousands of miles of roads. The National Recovery Administration was found to stabilize the industrial price and avoid deflation. Maximum working hours and minimum wages were also set up during the New Deal time. The New Deal helped America gradually recover from the bank crisis and unemployment. During 1933 to 1937, manufacturing increased 64 percent, GDP increased 43 percent, unemployment rate was 9.2 percent, still high but much better than the 25 percent in 1933. Many people believe the World War II is the final ending of the Great Depression. From the unemployment rate and the GDP point of view, it is true. With the war broke up, America's unemployment dropped to 3 percent. Economic growth reached 30 percent. But all of these are from the government investment and military expenditure. The private investment during the war, in fact, dropped 30 percent. Let's wish our civilization in the 21st century can learn from the crazy past. Let the nightmare only stay in the memories and academic papers, but not to the reality again. <laughs>